Hello everyone and welcome to the May Dev Diary for Prehistoric Kingdom for 2024. So there's a fair bit to cover in this Dev Diary and as you can see we're going to be talking a little bit about the staff members that are going to be entering the public test branch as well as Platyosaurus. So Platyosaurus and staff will be coming in the Update 11 public test branch soon. So the next release will include an early access version of staff gameplay featuring laborers and keepers. Their, visu their visuals are still a, a heavy work in progress, featuring non-final animations and materials, but their gameplay is mechanically functional. Although we explained how staff and logistics work in a previous dev diary, we'll quickly go through it again here with new in-game screenshots and GIFs. Yeah, so this is a um, pretty good look at what the staff system's going to be like. And I guess it's a good way of seeing the scale between the animals and people as well. And just seeing what it would take to run a dinosaur park, as I think this would be one of the best jobs in the world if this was real. But yeah, the Platyosaurus is looking really cool here. We got welcome to the Platyosaurus in the last dev diary, but seeing it here again is a really good good thing. As this dinosaur is actually pretty cool. Loading bay, a module that imports resources for animals and guests. This building can only hold a small amount of items relying on staff to distribute supplies throughout the park. When resources have been collected by staff, a truck will depart to replace your missing inventory. Returning later in the month, downtime between deliveries can be improved by purchasing up to two additional trucks per loading bay. So this is a really cool system, getting resources actually delivered to your park. Now I wonder how far they're actually going to take this. So you can also see um, a little gif here of like the, the trucks departing and entering. So it's, a, it's an interesting little system that they're working on. Since the loading bay can run out of room, you'll need to eventually expand your storage. Storage modules for goods and produce can be strategically played around, placed around the park to shorten delivery times in the long term. In Prehistoric Kingdom, this is a physical process. Laborers will walk from the loading bay to storage modules, transporting the required goods there is no global park-wide resource pool. Each storage building has its own internal shock and demands physical interaction from a laborer or keeper in order to retrieve a resource. Players can selectively block certain resource types when selecting storage module, allowing you to flexibly customize how things are stored without having to clinically micromanage everything. Blocking a resource that's already in storage will have it removed by a laborer. Labor's primary role is to transport resources around the zoo, taking meals and merch from the loading bay or good storage into, in order to restock kiosks, restaurants and gift shops so that visitors have products to buy. As mentioned, these staff members also take the responsibility for moving resources between storage modules. They like to move it, move it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Keepers take produce from the loading bay, storage modules or produce stations. They'll enter habitats via the new staff gates and restock feeders, providing your animals with food. You can see a work in progress here as the keepers will push a wheelbarrow. Oh, so they intend to, okay. They intend to make keepers push wheelbarrows once it's all finished. So they'll actually bring through a wheelbarrow full of the food and pour it onto the feeder. And seeing staff run around exhibits really gives us an appreciation for how big these animals were and highlights how massive these feeders are. Like, look at that, that is insanity. The size of that tall feeder just to feed the Brachiosaurus. Really gives a, gives a good idea of scale of Brachiosaurus too, as many people don't really appreciate how this animal was much taller than some of the biggest Titanosaurs that we know of. But yeah, it's a really cool system here and a good way of showing size. Of course, after animals have eaten, they'll also excrete. Keepers ensure habitats stay clean by taking dung to the nearest compost heap for conversion into, well, compost. Oh, I love this shot here. It's a, I, I like how this looks. This looks really nice. And the, the Triceratops, I, I always forget how good the Prehistoric Kingdom Triceratops is. It just looks fantastic. And yeah, so we've got our compost heap and it really blends in well. It looks like something that would be at an actual zoo. So that, that looks really good. Really excited for this toe. Um, compost is delivered to produce station by laborers. It's with these modules that players can grow their own food supply, converting compost into edible plants, fruit, meat, fish, or insects for the animals. 
Without compost, produce stations will continue to generate food, but will do so at a heavily reduced rate. You'll need a decent amount of, pro uh, of dung to keep these things going, but the gains are worth it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually really excited to see how this works, and I wonder if more detail would possibly be put in. Like, you see where the meat's being grown. I think there's going to be, like, chickens, maybe pigs and cattle. Um, and with the uh, fish growing, I wonder if we'll actually be able to see a little fish in there at some point. That would be a really cool extra detail. And insects, I, I mean, I don't know if they'll actually go to the detail of putting crickets and such uh, in there, but that would be in, uh, that would be amazing if they did. I, I really like the idea of produce stations. I think it's a really cool thing that... Maybe even Plant Zoo could implement at some point. Because growing your own food on site is something that many zoos do. Once staff go live on the public test branch, we'll be taking notes on balance while development continues on update 11. We aren't expecting them to have absolutely perfect out of the gate features. And there's still a lot of work to be done on guiding players through this entire system. One of the funny quirks that staff currently have is that they'll freely navigate wherever they want. They'll always take the quickest path to their destination, if it, even if it means going off-road. This is something that we'd obviously like to improve, but regardless, they'll get the job done, even if it means wandering through a desert for now. Another thing we'd like to quickly draw attention to are the staff gates. These are modular objects that can be placed anywhere. They are not exclusive defences, this means that you can even create functioning staff only areas which can be essential for maintaining high park beauty. Uh, that's something else that, that plans we should do, like have like staff gates so that like guests don't even wander into the staff areas e without having to place a staff path down to stop them. Like, I mean, I know I'm talking about a bit of plant zoo here with, when we're trying to talk about prehistoric kingdom, but there is great overlap here in what can be possible for both games. As part of our ongoing UI improvements, we've completely revamped the interface for selecting modular groups and items. It's refreshed, minimalized, and highly contextual to the group's contents or selected pieces. Clicking on a group now shows all the module information inside, allowing players to easily view things like loading bay content, storage modules, or changing an animal information sign. You can collapse each widget individually or hold the shift key to collapse all the widgets at once. These widgets will show up while, e while editing a group too. Simply select the item you want to view and the widget will appear, exactly like on the group menu. No more jumping back and forth. When selecting a group with lights, you'll be able to access a brand new lighting tab. From here, players will have the option to permanently toggle their lights on, regardless of the time of day, Indoor exhibit builders rejoice. Uh, that, that was just in the that was just in the stuff. The Paleopedia has been added to the public test branch. This can be fully accessed at any time from the left side of the screen, making it perfect for habitat construction or learning more about your creatures. From the home page, players can filter the search results by biome, time period, continent, diet, and even animal size. In the future, we will be expanding the Paleopedia to include articles for dig sites and eventually paleobotany. It's important to learn more about our prehistoric world, and we hope the Paleopedia can be a resource for that with time. There are certain aspects here that I think the Planet Zoo Zoopedia could have, like the size comparison thing. I think that's really cool, and even doing it by um, animal size as well. Like if you're particularly looking at um, areas that house small animals, that could be something they could, that they could implement. But this is a really good idea for particularly a game like this. Maybe Jurassic World Evolution 3 could have a similar thing. As a small improvement for the animal visuals, we've added detail maps to almost every species. This is a subtle layer of bumpy skin and scratches that sit on top of the existing art assets. It's not noticeable at a distance, but helps greatly when observing animals up close. Beyond the expected polish need for staff, there's a few things we'd like to do. For one, we'll need to do a lot of work on funneling, teaching players about the new mechanics. We've been designing a new help menu with updated articles to, de uh, to detail how everything in the game works, and we'll also be re revamping the game's notification system to be more helpful, providing suggestions and better information about what's wrong. In terms of staff, we still need to implement cashiers and then focus on balance until we're out of public test branch. Keep your eyes on our socials to find out when update 11 will be ready. That's really good. And down here uh, with the pictures of the um, skins of the animals, I'm 
assumed what they would be. Like, I assumed that that was probably Platyosaurus and Triceratops. I think that is definitely Platyosaurus. Uh, Triceratops. God. <laughs> Sinotherium seemed like the best choice for that one, and Spinosaurus. However, I could be wrong on most of them. <laughs> Update 12 will be a content-focused release, acting as a development buffer while we work on Update 13. It's going to include a new map, building theme, and includes three animals. A Padasaurus with an alternate species being Brontosaurus, and Hell Creek's very own armored tank, the Ankylosaurus. This update will have a focus on making visitors smarter and properly utilize our suite of new animations to make guests feel more lively. We've had to upgrade our animation tech for update 11, so it'll be a great opportunity to stretch its muscles here. The Ankylosaurus looks great though, like look at this skin! Uh, I've been looking forward to Ankylosaurus coming to Prehistoric Kingdom for a long time, as the accurate version of Ankylosaurus is really cool. And yeah, I can't wait to see this guy in action. This is just some concept art, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see this guy in game. And same with Brontosaurus as well, as we only got concept art for that as well. The only animal from update 11 we well, update 12 we've actually seen in game is a padasaurus so i'm really looking forward to those two other animals as a continuation of staff management we'll be adding another new mechanic messages through this menu players will be able to negotiate employee salaries try to keep staff on board and interact with the administration team we feel that this will be a great way to humanize staff and make their lives more than just a ui element and yeah, this <laughs> this looks fun. Like, it'd be so funny just to talk to you, to the staff members. As yeah, that's gonna be really cool. Like you got keeper Alexis, keeper Jonathan, keeper Kyle, keeper Jesse, and keeper Jesse. I imagine like these colors are based on your relationship with that staff member. So red is like, not so, oh that's a re that's a resignation. Oh okay, so uh, <laughs> I didn't read the actual reasons why they were messaging <laughs> but uh yeah so i think it's based on what the topic of the message is about <laughs> and like update 11 this will be a large mechanical update focused on the animals with update 13 aiming to improve their ai and behaviors with awareness sociality and herding there's not there's not too much else to say at this stage but we can't wait to share more and I think this uh, it, this picture taken by Lucy257 um, at the very end of the dev diary really does simulate the herding mechanic here uh, as like what it could be. Yeah, seeing all these Triceratops together is really cool. But yeah, that is the dev diary for May. So there's a fair bit of stuff uh, on the way. So. More, st more staff stuff coming to the public test branch, the Paleopedia, interacting with staff via messages, and of course Ankylosaurus is the new confirmed animal coming in update 12. So we're going to get Apatosaurus, an alternate species Brontosaurus, and Ankylosaurus. So it's going to be the A team, A and B team I guess. So yeah, keep your eyes on the public test branch for all these upcoming features and I'll certainly have a look at it at, at some point. Like, I know they've already added the Aeolinosaurus, so I think I'll need to check that out. But I might wait until this update comes through to have a proper look at what they've been working on in-game. But as for now, I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.